Hello, Shuin here. I'm a carpenter based in Japan. Today, I'm building a fall prevention pony wall on the stairwell and around the staircase. Also, in this 3,600mm space, I'm building a study desk using solid timber. First, I'm building the pony wall on the stairwell side. I'm afraid I may fall. So I install some scaffolding, then the joist size slumber at the front, so that I won't fall if I lose my footing. It rained on the framing day. So the exposed timber has a rain stain. First, I plane the area where my hands reach. As I can't find plane the surface, I sand it and remove the stain as much as possible. I measure and mark the frame's position. The pony wall will be built on the beam. The beam will be exposed on the stairwell side. The plaster wall will be installed on the inner side of the beam. On the other side, I'm going to build a 3,600mm study desk using solid timber. On the top, I install the top rail. It is 120 mm wide. This pony wall is small, so I install joist size slumber directly. It's the first time I've used a laser on the second floor. There is a 2 mm level difference in this 3.6 meters area. It is up to the carpenter to level this 2 mm. In my opinion, you can either level it or not if it's 2 mm. When building a wooden structure, there will inevitably be a level difference of about 3 mm. Usually, there is at least a 3 mm difference because of the wood sandness or hammering. Some places don't have problems with that 3mm difference, but others need to be leveled. It's up to the carpenter's decision. Building standards require stairwells and staircase pony walls to be at least 90 cm high. If it's for a balcony, it should be 1100 mm, which is taller. A height of 90 cm is halfway, but if it's built tall for safety, it will get in the way and feel closed. The stairwell will be hidden if a high wall comes in front. So I built it to 90 cm, which is the lowest acceptable height. Using string is the fastest way to measure the frame horizontally. This string is usually used with gyms set on both ends and measured horizontally by checking the center. This time, I set the string on the edge of the horizontal timber. This way, I can measure the horizontal frame's height in the middle. Then, I set the stud in the center and adjust horizontally by checking the entire frame.
I installed the fall prevention pony wall on the staircase. This wall is slightly thicker than the previous one. One side of the wall is right angled and there is no wall at the top of the stairs. To make it as sturdy as possible, I installed furring strips and then plywood board from the stairwell. I ensured that the pony wall is as thick as possible to prevent it from shaking even a little. Now, I install the top rail. It is called Kasagi or Tesurigi in Japanese. I install it on the top of the pony wall. It is straight grain and made of cedar hardwood. The benefit of straight grain is that it looks nice and it won't warp. It will warp if it is cross grain. As a side note, the fittings in this house are also straight grain because they will warp as well. I glue it, then screw it from the bottom. It's a simple installation. I measure and cut the top rail on the staircase side. This size top rail is about 15 millimeters wider. Timber measuring 1 meter and 3 meters will be attached in an L shape. I use a butt joint on the corner, which just cuts and attaches the end. I don't use a miter joint. A miter joint would fit well initially, but there would be a gap later on. If it's joined at the right angle, no gap will develop. It will be well secured for a long time if you apply pressure and joint neatly. I trace a curve on the corner and cut the timber. If it is not solid wood, you can use a miter joint because it won't shrink. But if you are using solid wood, it's better to use a butt joint to prevent the gap from forming. I install the top rail on the staircase side. I make the shorter rail's top surface 1mm lower. I want to make a more level difference, but a user's hand could be caught when using the rail. Even if I do not make a level difference, there will be one in the future. It's a difficult decision. I use a tension rod from the longer side. It is important to apply pressure firmly at the stage. The gap will develop half a year from now if the pressure has not been applied. I have finished building the pony wall frame. That's it for day one. It's day two, and I continue to work. As the glue dries, I remove the tension rod. I begin finishing the surface and corner. Since people are going to touch this rail, sandpaper will produce the best finish. I sand it with fine sandpaper and finish the surface and the corner. Now the pony wall is complete. I cover the top rail with protection sheets neatly. 
It's going to be a long process to the end of the construction. Even if I finish it carefully, I'm afraid something will damage it during the construction. So I make sure the entire top rail is firmly protected. I'm building the study desk. This desk counter will be built for studying purposes. Three children can sit and study side by side. It's a dynamic study desk. The disc height is 700 millimeters. I secure the furring strips to the frame and place three sides of the countertop on it. This space is a shared hall. It is known as a multi-purpose hall. Nowadays, it is popular to create this kind of space. This space is about 7.2 square meters, which is spacious. In this house, I think it will be used first as a study desk and then as a multi-purpose desk counter. Now, I start working on the desk. The material is 3.6 meter ash wood. It's quite heavy. I think it is about 50 to 60 kilograms. Three people struggle to carry it to the second floor. This countertop is cut to 600 millimeters. There will be a lot of space. Now, I chamfer the desk's corner to a round shape. The chamfer shape is called Bozumen in Japanese. I use a laminate trimmer. I have finished chamfering it, but as the trimmer's blade was not properly attached, it is shifted a little. There was a knot on that portion, so I decided to use a board backward. It was most challenging work to turn this long timber in this narrow space. It was dangerous, but we managed to turn it. It is really heavy. I guess it is over 60 kilograms. I start chamfering again. I just set the trimmer on the corner and press it. It's easy to use, but the blade wasn't attached well the last time. I widely chamfer only as the top edge to be a round shape. Then I use a sandpaper to finish it. It's hard to achieve a smooth touch with only an electric tool. Sanding it by hand will give a nice finish. The furniture maker finished neatly on three sides of this countertop, but I also use fine sandpaper to finish it. The circular saw is abandoned. It stopped in the middle of the first cut. The battery is dead. This battery always dies suddenly. It's better that it stopped in the middle. It would have been worse if the timber was about to be dropped. Before installing the countertop, I glue the end to prevent cracking. It's difficult to glue on the wall side, so I glue there in advance, then install it. Then I firmly secure it from the top.
I make the corbels on the bottom of the countertop. The furniture maker was supposed to shape the board, but it's not processed and a normal board was delivered instead. It's just a piece of board. I have no choice but to make the corbel. I'm trying to figure out what form to take. I'm going to curve the bottom a bit. This timber is also ash wood. To make it curved, I can only use a curved hand plane to finish it. So I make it with the radius that the curved hand plane can create. I'm using a jigsaw on the curved part, but ash wood is hard to cut. It can be cut if the timber is thin, but this timber is 40mm thick, so moving the blade straight is difficult. I forcefully cut it, and then I'll finish it neatly with a curved hand plane. I first finish one corbel to the right shape. After that, I trace the shape onto the remaining wood and make two corbels with the same shape. Ash wood is very hard. Jigsaw blades don't easily enter if the blade starts cutting diagonally. So I start to cut with a handsaw, then use a jigsaw from there. For the finish, I use a sander to make it neat, then I widely chamfer the edge. Finally, I sandpaper it by hand to ensure a smooth touch. Now, I install the corbels. I made two corbels. The countertop is 3.6 meters, and it is on three sides of the walls. It's sturdy enough even if only one corbel is used in the center. But this desk will be used by three people, so I think two corbels will make it a good balance, since it will be divided into three equal sections. It won't get in the way. I directly screw the corbel from the bottom. Of course, I will hide the holes using a plug called Tarusen. I glue it and then secure it. When screwing from the bottom, I carefully check the screw's length. It often comes out at the top edge when tightened at the end. So I confirm the length first for safety. I secure the wall side from the back of the stiffeners using a few 90mm to 100mm screws.
The countertop was slightly curved upward, so I used a tension rod in the middle to apply pressure. Ashwood will adhere well to the glue. I think glue works best in wood. I fill the hole using a tarusan. I use the same ash wood to make the tarusan. There is a tool that could make the tarusan, but it's faster to make it by hand if only one or two are needed. This Tarusen's shape is like a soy sauce or sake barrel. I think the name Tarusen comes from those barrels. I'm lying on the floor and struggling to install this Tarusen. But I wonder how many people will find this. I have completed the pony wall and the study desk for three children. Study hard! That's all for today. Thanks for watching.